Hey everybody and welcome. Today I'm going to do a playthrough, a solo playthrough of Champions of Midgard with both the Dark Mountains and Valhalla expansions. This is using the solo variant that I developed and have posted on Board Game Geek. And I guess a little bit of background here is appropriate. I'll try to keep it brief. Look, about Two years ago, I bought the base game, uh, I guess it was two years, maybe a little longer, bought the base game of Champions of Midgard, played it, enjoyed it, created a solo variant. It was a beat-your-own-score type solo variant that ended, that basically involved you taking a deck of cards, uh, 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 some of the cards out of a, de a standard deck of cards, and uh, a certain number of cards were allocated for each um, of the various spaces on the, on the game board. And uh, when you would play, you would play a four-player game against three dummy players, and the dummy players would go to a space based on a card that you drew randomly from that deck. Um, it was a pretty well-received variant, uh, uh, so much so that uh, at least I know one person sort of co um, created a custom deck for it uh, that I ha I didn't download, but I know a bunch of people did, and uh, so I, I guess I, I hope that a lot of people got a lot of pleasure out of out of playing that game. Uh, then I sort of got, I didn't so much enjoy playing Champions of Midgard any longer. I kind of soured on worker placement. I didn't think there was enough in the game that made it interesting for me, so I sold my copy. And, of course, in the intervening years, uh, intervening years there were Kickstarters and, and uh, the, very, the, the two expansions were made available, and the, the neoprene uh, game uh, playmat and so forth, all the various promos. And uh, lots of people bought into that, and, and I guess it, it definitely uh, and significantly improved the play of the game. And then a lot of people started asking me, hey, are you going to change your solo play uh, variant to accommodate the two expansions? And I had to apologize and say, sorry, no, because I don't own the game any longer. And uh, it was pretty popular. A lot of, I think at least six people asked me to do that, and I had a decline. But then, maybe... A month or so ago, a month or two ago, um, uh, I happened to be at my gaming group, uh, and a, a gaming friend of mine uh, uh, brought this out and set it up, and four of us played. I had to quickly come up to speed on how what the expansions changed, um, and came away <laughs> loving the game again. I just loved what the expansions did for it, so much so that... Uh, uh, eventually, I, I guess after a week or two, I decided, hey, what the heck? Um, a lot of people have asked me to update my solo variant. Let me buy the game with the expansions again. And 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 I went, I actually went all in, got the neoprene gameplay game mat and, and a lot of the promos and that this that and the other and the nice little wooden bits of the I guess what's called the Jarls edition or something like that. Uh, in any event, I got that. I posted on, game, on Board Game Geek that I was going to uh, revise my solo variant, and about a week or so later, I posted it on Board Game Geek. So if you're interested, you'll find it on the Champions of Midgard forum uh, the, for the core game, and it's in the file section. It's called Solo Variant for with Expansions for Competitive Play, something like that. And so that's what I'm going to demonstrate today, how that variant works and what you can do to tweak it to make it easier or harder for you, uh, depending upon what kind of player you are. Now, obviously, what you're seeing, you're seeing here that I am not going to be playing with my board game pieces today for purposes of the, to, to this demonstration. I am going to be using the program that I wrote to demonstrate the game. Uh, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I like writing programs for solo games that makes it easy to play them off the cuff without having to worry about cumbersome setup and so forth. And, um, and certainly in this case, it was, it was invaluable for me to have this when I was uh, play testing the, uh, my solo variant and I was trying out lots of different options. Um, so it was an absolute necessity for me to have this. Frankly, it would have taken me too long, and I would not have been able to play test enough to feel that I came up with a pretty good solid variant. Um, now, a lot of people may still think it's not a solid variant and may criticize this, that, or the other, and I encouraged uh, that when I posted it on Board Game Geek, but I haven't heard any, gotten any feedback one way or the other, so I'm hoping no news is good news. 
as I said, I did include in the variant ways to make the game easier if you're not a, if you don't think you're that strong a player or make the game harder if you feel you want more of a challenge. Um, so those options are available. And what you're seeing here is, are, are options that make the game more challenging. Um, now, I won't go into excruciating detail about how the variant works, but I'll sort of give you a rough idea once we're playing. Uh, I will say that I have played this now enough with against the dummy players that I do feel I need a little bit of a more of a challenge than what uh, what I typically go up against. I don't think I can beat the dummy players if I pick all four of these options. Uh, that would be too tough, I think. But I, I, I will pick half of them, so I don't know. I, I'll, I'll just pick these two. Um, so normally, dummy players win battles against burgressars and monsters. And by the way, I don't know, uh, I'm going to say right now, I don't know Norse uh, terminology uh, or dialect or any of that. So if I totally mispronounce something, I just apologize in advance for doing that. I'm going to just do my best. But as I was saying, normally against burgersars and monsters, monsters, dummy players automatically win battles um, if they draw an all client, uh, all quiet event, or if they draw some positive event like lone warrior in the case of a land event, or they draw shipwreck in the case of a sea journey event. By choosing these options, you're seeing you're, you're seeing that I'm going to make it even more likely than uh, than that that a dummy player is going to win a battle because if they draw a kraken or a bandage journey card, they're also going to win that battle. And if they draw a whirlpool or a thief journey card, they're going to win the battle. So um, basically, dummy players are now more often than not going to win battles than they might otherwise uh, win. It, under the base variant um, design, they win about half the battles uh, because if you consider all the all quiet cards and then you add in two more cards for either uh, Shipwreck or Lone Warrior, that's about half the number of cards, so 50-50 chance of winning battles. Now I basically changed the odds here so that the odds say uh, in a sea battle, the odds that a a dummy player will win are now 16. Let's see, I'm adding four more cards, so that's 16 out of 24. So that's uh, 8 to 12, 4. Uh, <laughs> trying to do math on the spot here. 4, 6. Two thirds of the time now they are going to win battles against sea monsters. So that's a pretty significant change to make this game tougher. But I'm up to the challenge, and hey, if I don't win today, I don't win. Um, honestly, I don't necessarily play my best when I'm talking at the same time and I may make silly mistakes so I apologize in advance if I do something stupid I'm sure you will be happy to post on the video any comments where I did make stupid mistakes or played something for wrong or whatever the case may be because obviously I don't want to mislead anybody who's new to the game or interested in possibly purchasing the game and maybe trying out the solo variant Anyway, let's get underway, and then I will explain basically how things work against the solo player, against the dummy players, uh, once we start. So randomly, the game is going to pick a starting player, and it shows me. I am the starting player. Um, could go on any other way. It just happened. I just happened to be the start player, so I'm not going to uh, uh, claim that I'm, I'm unhappy about that. Uh, there are, I have all nine leaders in the game. Now, because I'm the start player, the other three dummy players chose leaders, and now I get to only choose from the remaining six. Now, that's not to say that the dummy players use the benefits of their leaders. They are just removing them from the stack so that I don't have a full complement of nine leaders to choose from. Obviously, if, uh, say, green was the start player, then blue would pick one of the leaders, and I would choose from, from the remaining eight. But in this case, I'm choosing from the remaining six because all three of these players chose a leader. Uh, and it is important that the dummy players choose a leader, not because they use it, but, for example, you might use it if you get a, a I guess, a room card, for example, like you know, one called leadership uh, where you that allows you to use a benefit of one of the other leaders in the game. So it is important that you just randomly draw leaders for the other, um, for the dummy players just to make the game 
whole in that respect. Uh, for purposes of the today's uh, playthrough, um, I don't know. I, you know what? I'll just go with Asmunder. Uh, so as Munder says, I can gain two glory. You, you normally gain two glory for favor tokens that you have at the end of the game anyway. But as Munder gets to also score them if they if as Munder uses them to re-roll dice. So that'll allow me, that'll, that'll help me out here, and uh, I don't know how often I'm going to be re-rolling, but I would say enough that this might help me score an additional, I don't know, what, maybe 12, 16 points, something like that? Depends how things, how things roll, either in my favor or not. And then, of course, if I roll my blue leader die with the leader result, I also automatically gain a favor. My program will take care of that automatically. Okay, so I'm going to be as Munder. And now we're in round one, and the program populates the board. So let me real quickly say, give you a rough idea of how the variant works. So the dummy players still use a deck of cards that has been tuned for the expansions. Um, and, um, for example, in the, and the deck will change over the course of the round. So, for example, in round one, there are no cards in the deck that allow a dummy player to go up against a sea monster. But in round, after, in, at the beginning of round two, you add two cards. So now there's a small percentage chance that the dummy, dummy players will go up against the sea monster. And then in round three and four and so forth, more and more cards are added and changed so that you are changing the way the dummy players will play. So that by the time you get to round six or so, odds are that... Uh, all four of these spots are going to get taken up, up uh, by the sea, uh, up, uh, by sea monster uh, for sea monster battles, either by dummy players or by you, the human player. Um, I don't think it's until round three that the dummy players consider getting uh, going to the ship right, stuff like that. Dummy players automatically win battles against draugers and trolls if they go to that space. They get double the points. So if a dummy player goes to the troll, they get 12 points in this case instead of 6. And I get a blame token. Dummy players will have no dice. They have no resources. They don't even take care. You don't even count blame uh, for dummy players just to keep things simple. So um, uh, it was important when I was playtesting this that I not only playtested with my program, but that I, in fact, playtested with my board game pieces to make sure that I wasn't making a game that I felt was too cumbersome to play, because obviously what's the point of that? So uh, uh, very simply stated, if a dummy player goes to one of these spots, they get double points, period, and they win the battle. If they go up against a Burgressar, as I already described, only in the case of an all-quiet or a lone warrior journey result will they win, win the battle. And if, in that, if that is the result, then they win the battle and score double the points of, of the Burgersar. So in this case, they would score 16 points and 16 points over here as well. They also score double points if they happen to draw a rune card by going to the rune smith. Uh, they don't score double up against monsters. They, uh, so truth be told, they can do better going up against a Burgersar than they can against a monster because oftentimes uh, two times eight is 16. I don't think there are any monsters that score 16 points. Um, but as I said, the game is structured so that more often than not, as the game progresses, dummy players will tend to go the, up against monsters and less against Burgersars. Uh, obviously, dummy players don't go to spaces that are already occupied, and they don't go to spaces that make no sense for them. They don't go to the worker huts if they already have their fourth worker. They don't go to a shipwright if they've already taken a private long ship. Um, and I think those are probably the only two exceptions. Dummy players never go to the hunting grounds. Um, and otherwise, uh, I don't think there are... I, I, I don't think there are any, there's anything else that uh, prevents some, a dummy player from going to a particular space. You can see that I am playing with the uh, uh, chicken ship promo, uh, but the solo variant works whether you're playing with it or not. It doesn't matter. Okay, and what I draw is my destiny card. Odin's blacksmith uh, basically have the most black tokens remaining at the end of the game. Well, 
That's unlikely. I tend to use my black tokens or any of my sacrifice tokens a lot. So I don't know what was that worth. How many points? Uh, now, when you get a destiny card and you you can't compete against the dummy players because they don't track tokens, they don't track resources and so forth. Then if I got if I had three to three or more tokens at the end of the game, I would score the five points. And if I had one or two of the tokens at the end of the game, I would score two points. In other words, I would score zip. Uh, I don't I don't know if I'll have any black sacrifice tokens. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Okay, so I guess we that's enough information for me to get underway. You'll basically get an idea of how this plays once I start. Um, so let me see what I'm up against here. Uh, a pretty easy troll. Now remember, I'm the only person who accounts for blame. So if a dummy player goes here, I get a blame. If nobody goes here, I get a blame. And if somebody goes here and doesn't beat the troll like me, I, I get a blame. So uh, more often than not, I'm going to get a lot of blame accruing from the troll spot unless I happen to go there on my own. So I, I probably will do that a handful of times just to keep my brain for, from totally getting out of control. Um, uh, what do we have here? A Draugr, page 9 and 4, but gives you a blame, and pays 5 points and 2 gold, and you can't use red dice. Okay, two 8-point Burgersars that are kind of similar. And down here where we have, uh, okay, 11, 12 points, 10 points, and 14. All right, so for my, since I'm the star player, I get to go first, and I think I'm going to go up here to the Draugr and grab some money, because I, obviously I want to get my fourth worker as quickly as I possibly can. So I will go to the, the Draugr. And now the other three players you could see, you see have gone. Just imagine that they were drawing from this deck of cards, which I think starts out at about 22 cards. It's about a 22 card deck, and uh, you could obviously uh, the blue player, dummy player two, went to the hafter, dummy player three went to the church, and dummy player four went to the sage. Now because the purple player went to the sage, this is an, a little wrinkle that if the the purple player also goes to a burgersar or a monster. Now they won't go to a monster in round one, but if purple does pick one of the Burgersars, then the highest scoring monster that they're up against, or monster or Burgersar that they're up against, they will be able to reveal the um, the journey event card and automatically win that battle regardless of what the event is. So purple may possibly win a battle against a Burgersar if they happen to go to a Burgersar space. That remains to be seen. Okay, so for my next choice, um, also what's down here? For a gold, get a wood or any die. That's pretty attractive. I think I will go to the merchant ship and pay the gold, and I will take. Should I take a pink die? Yeah, why not? Let me take a, take a berserker die right from the game form. Game, uh, right from the get-go. So now I have a white, my white uh, sword, swordsmith, uh, swordsman die, and my blue leader die that I started with, and I now I have a, a pink berserker die as well. Okay, um, blue goes to the blacksmith. Green went to the worker huts. That's good for me because that'll make it cheaper for me to get my worker. If I can get uh, beat this Draugr and get my four bucks, then I just have to get to the worker huts first, uh, and nobody's to gone to Jarl's yet, so so far I'm still starting player, so uh, chances are I'm going to be able to get my fourth worker next round, um, assuming I beat this drawer, and I don't expect that to be a problem, but I do need to get some more dice. Uh, let's see what kind of stalls we have here. Variags get you a white and a red for a gold. Raiders get you two red for a wood. Marcus, a uh, lovely stranger, two gold, and a Mingi, um, pay, a, pay a food and, and get a, uh, a favor up to three times. Um, I think I'm going to go to the Raiders. Yeah, Blacksmith's already been taken, but I 
I'll go to the Raiders and grab the two red dice from there. Okay, market, swordsmith, somebody, okay, purple went to Jarl, so now the purple player is going to be the new start player. Uh, those, that's not bad. Uh, it just means that as long as purple doesn't go to the worker huts, I should be able to get my fourth worker in, in round two. You can see that uh, green went to the runesmith and draw and drew the highest scoring card that was available so that was the one they took remember the the uh, at the end of the game they'll score double those points okay time to assign dice well i only have to assign dice to this drawer that i'm against purple did go to a burger so you can see that the journey card has been revealed they normally would have lost this battle because it's a blizzard but now they will win it because they both went to both the state, the Sage's house and this Burgersar. So Purple's going to score here and get 16 points uh, when they otherwise might not have. Uh, and as you can see, because the dummy players score double, they tended to get the lead right away off the bat. Um, although, funny, nobody else went to a Burgersar or a Draugr, and nobody went to the Troll either, uh, which is unusual. So uh, I... Once the troll space is evaluated, my blame will increase by one. Um, anyhow, back to me for, well, I'm just basically going to assign all my dice to the, to the Draugr. So, uh, 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 because this is a Draugr that, um, what's going on here? Why is that? There we go. Uh, so this is a Draugr that says uh, you get one blame at the start of each round of combat, but uh, he doesn't destroy any of your dice. So uh, I'll have these dice going into round two, which is nice, but I am going to take an extra blame. So I'm going to probably end this round now, end this uh, round one with two blame because nobody went to the troll, especially me, and uh, I'm probably, I'm obviously going to go up against this Draugr. Uh, but I'll probably beat it, I think, um, with these five dice uh, that I'm playing. Uh, so I think that's going to be an easy bet. Um, I only have to hit it with th uh, three hits, so I'm, I'm pretty good. Okay, so that's good. I'm going to continue. So I got my two blame. One for the troll and now one for round combat round one up against the Draugr. I got three hits and a shield. Of course, the shield doesn't do any good in this case, but the three hits does allow me to score points, so I will score nine points and get four gold. That was an easy battle. Okay, the purple automatically defeats the Burger Star, so they got 16 points, and now we're into round two, because obviously no one, and including me, went to a monster last turn. So we're in round two, and now things will change a little bit. So you may see that dummy players may go to the uh, to fight against a monster or two. Um, anyway, round two. Uh, oh, so D, uh, dummy player four was the start player, and they went to the troll space. So that's lucky for me. So I'm going to go to the worker huts and get my fourth worker. That's an easy decision to make. Okay, blue went to the merchant ship. Uh, green went up against this Draugr, which is they'll automatically win. And purple went up against the um, this monster uh, on the left. But basically, they either choose to go to one of the two monsters on the left or one of the two monsters on the right, and they go to, up against uh, the monster that scores the most points. So in this case, purple went up against the 12-point monster instead of this 11-point monster. And they, Purple will win this battle if they happen to draw an all-quiet or shipwreck. All right, uh, so for my second placement, uh, I think I do want to go up against a monster. I want to start accruing some points here. Um, so what's left here? Obviously, I can't afford the chicken ship. That costs two food and a favor. And I have one food in a favor, but I'm okay with going with this uh, the five-capacity public longship. And uh, probably not okay going out this far. I, I don't think I can, uh, I'm not going to have 
enough food, obviously, to probably justify a trip out here. So I'm going to go up against uh, this dark shaman, or shaman. Shields block no damage against this monster, but it's worth 11 points if I defeat it and a gold. Okay. All right, back to me. So uh, blue went to the sage's house. Um, green went to the market, and uh, purple went to the uh, the church. And uh, let's see. I want to get some more dice. I would like. I'm also tempted to go to the storehouse and grab the food. Um, especially since the merchant ship is taken up. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I'm going to go and grab the food right away. I don't want to lose that. So uh, let's go and get the two foods. And so now my food supply is up to three. Somebody went to the rune, somebody went to the swordsmith, and now, um, what's my last placement going to be? Is it going to be the blacksmith or the raiders? Um, let's see. I have enough red dice. I think I will go to the blacksmith and grab a black die. Okay, so you can see that green, uh, green was the player that got uh, the fourth, or that went to the worker huts last turn. So green has four workers, purple only has three, and blue only has, let's see, there, there, where's blue, and down at the merchant ship. So um, blue and uh, Purple, I guess, are a little bit behind the eight ball um, just because they don't have their fourth worker yet. But they'll get them. Um, well, blue, you can see it right here. Blue and purple don't have it. So they'll get it uh, soon enough. All right. Um, so I'm up against just this monster down here. Uh, I have no clue what this card is, obviously. So let's see. Uh, we'll be... Well, clearly I can get by with one food, and um, uh, I guess, you know, what do I need here? Three, two hits, and I'll lose two dice unless I have some shields. So I'll, at the very least, put down my pink die, which I'll probably lose, and my blue die. But I will probably supplement this. I'm going to add another food. And I'll throw in a red, a black or a red. Well, I'm automatically going to lose my pink. Um, I'm not going to want to lose my blue. Uh, I think I'll draw, I'm going to play with a red die here. I'm And, and hope, I guess I have a one out of six chance that I'll get a shield. Um, so I'm going to play with these. I could put a fourth die here. No, I can't. This is a, a five-capacity ship, so I'm, I'm at max now. Uh, but this way, I've added in a little extra food or maybe an extra die, because I could get by without the red die, probably, and get the two hits I need. Um, so, But if I get, happen to get a bad journey card, um, I'll, I, I tend to build in, you know, add a little bit of insurance uh, so that I don't get screwed when it comes to, comes up, uh, when I go up against a burger saw or a monster. Uh, anyhow, let's see how things play out. So I, that's my third blame now. These guys are automatically winning these battles, scoring double points. Uh, we're now evaluating this monster, rolling my dice. So I got the two hits I need, and I uh, didn't get a shield, and I got my leader die. So if I stick with these results, I'll get a favor, but I'll lose two of these dice, which will probably be the red and the pink. Um, I don't, I only have one favor. I don't, it's obviously not worth it to me to, to re-roll on it. So I'll, I'll just go with those results. And the pink die goes away automatically, so I have to remove one other die, and that's going to be my red die, because I don't have enough tokens to, to get my leader die back right now. So I'm going to hold on to my leader die. So now I have a red token and a pink token and four dice to my name. 
And uh, I'm, not, I'm not doing badly here. I'm in third place up against Purple, who's now accrued 36 points so far. So Purple is the player to beat. Um, and that and Purple got those points even without getting its fourth worker. So uh, it's only going to probably play stronger as the game proceeds. So now we're in round three. And I am, and Green went to Jarl's last time, so now I'm the third to go. So, uh, looks like Green went to the Runesmith and took a card, and Purple went to a Draugr. So, what am I going to do? Um, so I think I'll go to the, I was going to say go up against the monster, but maybe I should, I should probably try to keep my blame out of, uh, under control. So, since nobody went to the troll, I probably should go there. It's kind of a waste. It's only worth, well, nine points, actually. Uh, it's a better troll than normal. So, you know, I guess I won't complain against about that. So, I'm going to go and pick the troll spot. Now, the question is, do I have enough food to justify and enough dice to justify going up against somebody else? So, I need three hits against Season. I've got four dice, probably can get more. I've got a wood, so I can always go back to Raiders. And I have a gold, so I can go back, I go to, go to Variags if necessary. And I can get dice. Nope, yeah, Merchant Ship is still available too. Question is, do I get the dice first? Or do I grab my monster? I think I'm going to grab the monster, because again, I don't think I want to go out this far. Even though they've got two gold on them, I probably want to go, go up against this guy. Uh, slain by any damage, gain a gold per hit dealt. So that's not bad. So yeah, I'm going to once again use the five capacity ship and go up against this monster. Another Draugr is taken. Um, Green went up against, uh, used the chicken ship uh, against this monster out here. And uh, Purple went to the Sage's house. Um... Uh, Purple has not gone to a monster or a burger star yet, so that may not help it. And then, uh, what am I going to do? You know, I uh, sometimes I go to the uh, hunting grounds. Obviously, it wouldn't help me now in this round, but it might help me in future rounds. But now I'm up against two uh, two guy, two enemies, so I I don't know, I can't afford to go to the hunt the, the hunting grounds. I need all the dice I have. And one food's just not going to cut it. Um, I think I'm going to go here to the smokehouse. It's pretty paltry. But uh, that's, I think, where I'm going to grab this food. Yeah. Okay, green. So green went to Jarl's. Green was the star player. That means the new star player is purple. So now I'm in second place again in, in turn order. Um, I'll go back to the blacksmith for now and grab another black die. Oh, that's it already, yeah. Okay, so I went to the troll and this monster, the blacksmith and the smokehouse. Okay, so. Well, clearly I'm going to go with two food against this monster. Which would allow me to allocate four dice. So I'll probably only allocate three. What do I need? Oh, I don't. I only need one hit, but I will be able to get some extra gold. Um. Hmm. Well, let's put a black die here temporarily. Now for the troll, I need three hits. So this is going to be a little tougher. So I'm definitely going to. Put a black die here, and I got a blue, red, and a white die remaining. Um, well, I don't want to take too much time. Let's let's go with a red. You know, let's go with a red and a blue, and I'll go with a black and a white down here. Now, there's a chance I'll have to give up a die. If I get a bad journey result, uh, I would give up the white die. So uh, I think I could, I have three favor tokens, so I can easily get at least one hit, if not two, 
um, against this monster. And I think with these three dice, I should be able to defeat the troll without too much trouble, so I'm, so I'm pretty good. Let's go on and see what happens. So against the troll, I got two hits. Not enough. Uh, so I obviously have to re-roll. So what do I want to re-roll here? Uh, well, clearly I want to re-roll this. Now the leader die has a 1 out of 6 chance of... Uh, let me pull those stats up. Yeah. So there's a 1 out of 6 chance on the leader die to get a double hit. And a, and a 1 out of 3 chance to get a double hit on the black die. The question is, do I want to re-roll this? Or, or Let's try roll, just rolling... I don't know. This is a really tough choice. Um, I'm going to gamble and roll the blue die alone. I have three favors, so I can roll again if I have to. This might be totally stupid. Yeah, it was stupid. <laughs> um, I don't know. Do I roll again? Oh, what do you know? Okay, so on my second chance, I got... Uh, I probably... Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if I played that well. <laughs> this, is, this is not a good start. And I'm spending too much time worrying about my choices. But in any event, let's go with that. And um, I score the points and lower my blame by one. So I'm now down to two blame. And, uh, okay, so I can afford either one of these blessings. So this will get my leader die back. I, obviously, I lost all those dice against the troll. So both of these will get my leader die. This will give me two yellows. That's awfully attractive, but this allows me to get rid of two blame and go back to zero, which is kind of attractive, too. Uh, okay, i got to make a quick decision. I'm going to go and get rid of the blame, because it's easy. If I'm not careful, I could easily lose 21 points at the end of the game, because I'm not managing my blame well. So I'm going to go with uh, Frege's Blessing, and uh, I guess I'll pay a pink token in addition to the two reds. And I'll go ahead and get rid of my two blame. So now my blame's down to zero. Okay, an inauspicious start, to say the least. Purple's now got 48 points. Oh, Purple didn't get advantage of their Sage's house. Uh-oh, so I got Odin's trial, and I have to, this is pretty bad, so I'm going to get a favor out of it, but I have to lose two food and or dice. Uh... What do I have here? I have two food and two dice, so I obviously I'm going to give up one of each. So I'll give up the food, and now I'll give up my white die. So now I've got a black die up against this monster that only requires one hit. So, um, so that's not so bad. So I'll get rid of the white die, but I'll only probably get one. Oh, I got a, bl a blank. Oh man. This is not going well, and I only have one favor left. Uh, well, here goes nothing. Uh, boy, this could be a bad beginning. Oh, I got two hits. Okay, I got uh, a nice... That turned around for me. So um, I don't have any favor tokens left, but I will get two gold out of this and ten points. Okay, so what happened? Uh, uh, I get, I guess that, I guess, dummy player four won that battle. Yeah, he got an all quiet, so he earned fourteen points by defeating the Lindworm. And it didn't. He did not take a blessing. There's a one out of three chance in rounds one through six when a, a dummy player goes up against the monster that they don't take a blessing that turn that round or that turn, I should say. Okay, so we're now in round four, and uh, 
I wasn't able to get to the ship right before. I can get to ship right now, so I think I'm going to get my ship right now. And it's going to be skied. So that's a seven capacity ship. It gives me a little more breathing room in my monster battles. So I will use that ship for my second choice. Question is up against which monster? So this one's 14 points and a gold and a favor. Plays all who roll hits. 11 points. Only one hit needed. That's kind of more attractive to me. Uh, here I need more food. I can get three gold out of this. But again, I'm light on food, so I don't think I'm ready to go out this far. I think I'm going to go for the easy target for now. Uh, let's go up against Monster 2, using my private longship. Okay, so the other three win. I'm not going to... It's not necessary for me to describe now where the other three players went. Uh, so for my third placement... Um, I can't pass up these three red dice, so I'm going to grab those. And then uh, I have a gold, so I could go up here, get a white and a red, two red for a wood, and I do have a wood. And down here, two food. Oh, I really need the food. You know, I really should go to the hunting grounds, and I'm probably not going to go to the hunting grounds. So I'm just going to try to scrounge out some scrounge up some food as I play. So let's clearly go to the merchant ship and grab the two food and the wood there. So now my wood supply is up to two. And here we go again. So uh, I'm only up against one enemy now. Um, so two food should be sufficient. And I only have four dice. I guess I can. I just, I just need to play them all. I only need one hit. But red dice do have shields, have a shot, so I might be able to reduce some of that. So I'm just going to assign all my dice. Three reds and a blue die. And hope for the best. Again, not knowing what this... But if this allows... This forces me to lose a die or a food... That's not the end of the world. It just means I'm up. I'm going with a red die. If I lose a food, I'm going to be a red die and a blue die against this guy. The uh, question is, should I add in a, a third food? I, I don't think so. I'm just going to... I got hit bad last turn. I'm just going to hope that I don't get hit quite as bad this, this round. So let's go with the, those odds. And... Purple gets, oh, Purple's going to do really well here. They just scored double on the Troll, scored double on the Draugr. Green's uh, won the fight against the Burgersar. And what did I get? Lose one die or one food. So clearly I'm going to lose a die, and not a food. So I will get rid of one of my red dice. <coughs> okay. So I easily got my hit. I got four hits. I didn't get any shields, so that means I'm going to lose all these. But I will, I will be able to get some sort of blessing out of it. Uh, my play style, by the way, is not to save up for epic monsters. I just don't tend to do that. Uh, I, I did it maybe once or twice while I was play testing, but normally when I play, I don't do it. Uh, so that's going to kill all those dice. And what are my choices? Okay, so I can get either one of these two blessings. So this will get me th possibly three food. This gets me two yellow dice. Wait a minute, I can get both of these, maybe. Black, a red, black, and something. So a red, black, and a white. Yeah, wait a minute. So that's three reds. One black, and then a black and a white left over. I can get both of these. Yeah, I'm going to take both of them. So I'll, I'll take Fortune of the Gods. And for my extra, I'm obviously not going to pick white. So I'll pull uh, red, rather. I'm going to get rid of a white token. And I'm going to take three food. So I'm going to stock up on food here. 
that takes some of the pressure off the food. And now I'm going to get some a pair of yellow dice, which is nice. That'll use up all my remaining tokens. You can see there's no chance I'm going to be able to score on Odin's blacksmith and get some black tokens by the end of the game. It's just not going to happen. Okay, so that's it for me. Uh, all quiet for green, so all quiet defeated the monster here. And now we're going into round four. Um, purple still has not gotten its fourth worker. But it still has a good lead. 68 against me and green at 57. Blue is trailing the field. That's Blue's not doing too well. There's always one dummy player who just who just shouldn't be in the same league with us. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, round five. And I guess I'm going to use my long ship again. And uh, what do we have? Can I go up against this guy? I need four hits. I've got a pair of yellows now to my name, so I feel better about that. And I have more food, so I could possibly go out this far. But that's only worth 10 points. That's worth 11. This, worth, this one's worth 14. This one is worth 14, but also has two gold. I'm going for the first monster. Okay. Now, I would like to get some more dice. Oh, I could go to the merchant ship. And get a green archer die. Oh, I don't. Oh, I have no gold. I guess I'm not going to the merchant ship. I could go to the raiders and get a pair of reds, or I could go to wealthy stranger, and then figure I can either go to here, here, or here. Let's try those odds. Let's go to wealthy stranger, grab some gold, and then hope that maybe the merchant ship is still available. So far, so good. All right. Uh, so I got another blame um, because purple went to up against the troll. So that, that automatically means I get a blame. And now do I go against... Yeah, I'm going to go to the merchant ship and get a, a, another food and a green die. And then for my last placement... I could get a pair of reds, a free red, a free black. I guess I'll grab the blacksmith and get the axeman's die. Okay. All right. So, again, so again, I'm only going up against one bad guy. And so this is pretty typical. I'll spend two food. Now the question is, I have a lot of dice to choose from. Uh, well, let's throw in my blue die for sure, just because I get a nice benefit if it comes up on the leader result. I get those favors, and I can use all the favors. I I just like to have the options of re-rolling. And then, uh, what other dice? So, I, so I'm using my own ship, so I could put up to f three more dice here. Uh, slain by all who roll hits, and I need four hits. So that's a lot of dice to give up. Uh, well, a green is pretty much a, sh a guaranteed hit, so let's go with a green. Question is, do I want to use my? Um, let's definitely go with a black. Question is, do I want to use a yellow? Or do I want to save them? Can I get four hits out of this? The green only gives me one hit. I could get a double here. So if I get one hit here and maybe a double here and one hit here, those are difficult odds. Again, especially if I don't get a, a, a nice... Uh, so far, my uh, journey cards down here have not been too kind. I don't want to, I, you know, if it's, a, if it's a, just a semi-bad journey and I have to lose a food, I could possibly have to lose two dice. 
I, I'm going to go with these results. I'm going. This is a bit of a gamble here, but uh, I'm going to stick with that and hope for the best. Purple gets uh, scores against the troll. Green scores against the Draugr. Blue score got Lone Warrior scores against the Burgersar. And uh, now it's me. So, what did I get? I got two hits. Um, well, clearly I want to re-roll this. And uh, I will. Uh, I'm gonna re-roll this. I gotta, I gotta do better because this is just not the odds of me getting a double on the blue by itself are not good. But if I rolling re-rolling both of those dies, I think I have better chances of getting at least one double. Of course, I could get one double and no hit. Uh, so. Oh, uh, uh, oh! What did I, I? I wasn't even paying attention. I got shipwreck, so I got two gold out of that. All right. Well, I won't complain about that. All right. I'm back to re-rolling. I'm re-rolling these two dice. I got two points again because. Oh man! Oh man! Oh man! Oh man! Oh man! Well, slays all who roll hits, so I'll, I can go into another round of combat and only give up my green die and have that one hit. Okay, so I, yeah, this is not so bad. So I'm going to continue and go into round two of combat with my black and blue die and needing three more hits. So I've got two more hits. Do I go into another round or do I re-roll the black? I'm going to go with another round and re and then just get because why yeah why pay for a re-roll of the black? I'm going to get a re-roll of the black anyway. So now I have three hits against this monster. I need one more hit and I got it. Okay, so uh, but I lost all those dice in the course of doing it. Obviously that was to be expected. Uh, but I also got two gold out of it, and I got two gold down here. So um, for the bounty, so uh, I did pretty, I did pretty well. I have to be pretty happy about that result. Okay. Oh, and I get some choices again, and I can score five points with either of these two blessings. These are permanent blessings. Um, is that the right term, permanent, or are they instant? I always get that mixed up. The, the, the point is they score five points if I take them in round five. So do I want food, or do I want uh, a Burgersar amulet that, that scores points if I go up against a Burgersar? I haven't gone up against the Burgersar yet. Oh, this is only when hunting. Oh, yeah, that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to grab the Burgersar amulet. And uh, maybe I'll uh, change my approach here and go up a couple up against a couple burger stars and grab some grab some food that way, some extra food. Okay. So I have actually taken the lead. Oh wait, green has to go. So green may. Uh, let's see what happens. Green got it all quiet. Green is in the lead uh, by ten points going into round six. Uh, okay, now I gotta really put pedal to the metal. Um, oh, and uh, I guess whatever happened here, whoever went to Jarl's gave me first place. Uh, so that's a nice way of getting into first place in turn order without doing anything. Um, all right, private longship, witch monster. So we've got 11 points, no white dice. Nine points, no black dice. Ten points and five gold. I've got three food. Ten points, eleven points. Oh, yeah, this is an easy... Yeah, I'm definitely going against this guy. That's an easy decision to make. Okay. Okay. 
So I have two yellow dice. I don't have my blue die. So I'm going to need some dice here. Can I manage another enemy? I would like to go against the Burger Tsar. I have gold, so I can easily get by a bad result on a journey card. So do I go up against this guy and grab two green dice? If I can beat him? He, he needs two hits. Let's do that. And now I have to worry about getting the dice that I need to manage two enemies. So... What are my choices? Raiders. Variags. Oh, three white dice on the merchant ship? Or should I grab the blacksmith? Three whites. I don't know what the, stat, the stats are of three whites uh, versus a black die, but I'm going to go with the quantity. So I'm going to grab the three whites for a gold. If, any, if anything, they can serve as cannon fodder. And nobody took the blacksmith, so I'm going to take it. And now I'm going into the assignment phase with uh, with six dice. So th that, those are pretty good odds. Okay, let's see. Well, we'll sign three food here to be safe. And well, let me think about this. I can't. No swords here. So if I put a black and two yellows here, and I lose a food, I'll lose a die. You know what? I think I can get by with two food. We'll try that. And up here, um, I guess everything else. What's that? Oh, three white dice. That's not great odds, but... Uh, now what do I have? Two favors. If I move a black die up here, two yellows should be enough. Trouble is, if I get a bad journey card, which I've been getting steadily, uh, I'm going to go with this. <clears throat> okay, blue uh, beats the troll, green beats the Draugr, and... Oh, I got it all quiet. That's nice. Wow. Not a good start. We were all three. Boy. I need one hit, one reroll. These are not great odds. Oh, okay. We beat that. Lost all the white dice. I think that, oh, we get, that's right, first our amulet. We get a uh, resource. I'll take food, of course. And I'll take a yellow die for sure. Uh, pay a white token. Okay, what do we got? Lose a die. Oh, I guess we're losing a black die. <clears throat> all right. Wow, okay, that's right, I didn't have any favors. Uh, fortunately, I just barely made that. There are no, uh, can't use those sacrifice tokens in any combination. And green is pulling ahead here. And here we go into round seven, this is. All right, uh, we're going for a monster right away. Oh, that's right. There's that resurrection. That will come in very handy. All right. I'm def uh, I am wonder if I should go there first. Uh, let's grab a monster. Uh, so we got 10. We have 14. 10 with 6 gold. And 8. And I have 2 food currently. Well, this gold would be nice. Two and two, two and three. Oh, what the heck, let's go for it. Um, uh, two food, I'm going to have to get food somewhere. Necessary, I can go to the market. It's 
smokehouse doesn't offer much. All right, let's see what happens. Merchant ship just got taken. Ooh, the old sage's house got taken. You know what? I'm going to go to the woundsmith next. I think, yeah, I want to get this uh, resurrection. Okay, so the resurrection, discard two tokens, collect matching dice from the supply. So we'll use that. And uh, we're definitely going for yellow. I think. I think that makes the most sense. Yeah. So two yellows. Okay. And uh, place a worker. So um, need to need to get more points than just for one monster. Got eight here, six here, six here, six and five here. Need three hit. Oh. One hit and boy, oh, that's not bad for six points. Doesn't give me gold, but gold I'm okay on at the moment. So I'm gonna go. Let's try this burger star. Okay. So I got six dice here. Can I pull up? Can I go for one more? Controls taken. Oh, my blind's up to four again. Oh, uh, this might be asking a lot. I might be pushing myself a little too hard. But you know what? I, I feel I need, I need to gamble and go for the points. Let's go for it. Oh, crap. No more dice? <sighs> Shoot. Oh, I thought I was going to get more dice out of this. All right, if I put two dice, two yellows here, I need one hit. So a green, oh, I can't put a green there, of course. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, so I'm going to have to, oh, I can put a yellow here and then put the rest of the dice here. One yellow, yeah, I should be able to pull a hit out of that. All right, <clears throat> this is what I'm worried about down here. I don't have any room for air. Got one hit. Oh no, I got two hits, uh, but I'm gonna lose a die. Oh, I didn't get a shield. I'm gonna lose two dice. Of course, I didn't get a shield. There's no shields on uh, green dice. Uh, I, I don't think I can afford to use a favor right here. So these two dice are gone. And come on, come on. All right, I got my hit. So that's good. I got one down, two to go. Oh, I can get points. Ooh, seven points. Yeah, I'll take it. All quiet. Nice, nice, nice. Got it. Okay. Two down. Here comes the hard part. Oh, yeah. I get my food. He got it all quiet. That was green. Green's pulling ahead still. Mm. All depends what I get here. And I got... Oh, jeez. Oh, that's bad. That is bad. <sighs> yeah, I don't know a choice. It has to be one of each. Uh, I can't. There's no way I can. This battle's lost. There's no, well, it's not entirely lost. I could get a double on this yellow. Odds are not good, though. <sighs> Come on. I could really use it right here. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, wow, wow. All right. Blessed be the 
whatever. <laughs> that helped. Okay, so I'm still within fighting range going into round eight. I need to pull out all the stops here. And what do I have? I only have one green die. Uh, not good. I gotta get to the troll. I gotta keep my blame under control. I don't think I'm gonna pull this out though. Um, two food. I really have to stay to this side. Two and one. One and two. Nine points. That's over here. Fourteen. As long as green doesn't grab that. I, I, I don't think I can afford to go there. So I'm going there. All right. Uh, I need dice. Lots of dice. Down here I'm getting food. I got lots of money. Uh, I guess I'm going to Rangers. And I'm going to Variags. And that's all she wrote. Green did not go here. That's that's good. Green didn't get to a monster. Green didn't. Green's not getting anywhere up here. He's not fighting anymore. This may be all. That may be all the points he's getting, other than game-ending points. Okay. So down here, I only need one hit. So I can put two food. And um, I need one hit. One. Oh, I need. I only have one favor, and I don't have my leader die. If I put one green there, put three reds up here, I can put a white here. I think that's what she wrote. I could lose the food, but then I'll just lose the white die. So I, I think we're okay. Let's go with this. Go! Oh, got three hits. Troll is down. And does that get me anything? Ah, Odin's Feast. It doesn't get me points, though. And I'm not... I just gotta hope that I recycle this. Uh, the food's not doing me any good, but uh, by getting this out of here, and so um, purple won't be going for anything. Uh, the, these guys, the dummy players, don't go for blessings on, until they're down here, and I'm the first monster. So they may go. They may go for blessings or get possibly an epic monster. There's a one out of three chance that a dummy player will go for an epic monster. Somebody's taken one. Already, I didn't even notice. All right, I, I have to take this just to get it out and hope that I can possibly, or I can wait. No, nah, I can't wait. Um, I only have a white and a green die here. This is it. I'm just taking this for the sake of taking it, but I'm not getting anything for it. There's no benefit to be had. Uh, at least I'll have my black one black token, so I'll get a couple points for Odin's Blacksmith. Okay, the fact that green didn't go for anything, that's the one thing I have going for, my, going for me here. Blue and purple are not doing very well. Oh, I got it all quiet. Alright, I got my one hit. That's all I needed. Ooh. All right. Uh, so taking this doesn't get me points. It gets me a die, which is worthless. And it uses my black token, which so I clearly I want to get at least two points for that. Okay, what do we have? So I'm in the lead, but that may not hold very long. 163. Oh, green went up to 186. I came in a somewhat of a distance second. 
Oh, well. 147, two points for Odin's Blacksmith. One set only of enemies. One point's worth of room cards. My private longship, some blame, uh, some favors and gold points, and lost six points on blame. 163. And then green, 146, 26 points for room cards. Yeah, there's a little bug there. When I go to green, it changes my score. That's a bug. Um, anyway, where do you have five? One, two, three, four, five point, you know, five room cards worth 13 points times two equals 26. That's an odd bug. Anyway, came in second, 186 to 163. And actually, blue and purple, these guys were way behind, so they caught up a little bit. Anyway, the whole point was you got to see how the solo variant works. If you like the look of it and you like this game, try it out. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye for now.